Today I want to talk about apples in particular. Okay. You know, a lot of people think we can't really grow good apples on the west side of the mountains, mm. but the west side of the mountains were where all the orchards were from about the 1880s till the 1920s, you know? Yeah, I have a ton of orchards in my neighborhood. And it's so fun to grow your own homegrown fruit. What could be better than that? That's true. But there are some things we have to think about. Probably the first thing we need to think about our apple scab. That's an easy thing to control. And it all comes down to choosing the right variety of apple. Oh, the right tree for the right environment. That's right. So it just so happens, you know, these uh, extension services mm -hmm. from colleges, what they've been doing is they've been uh, doing tests to find out which apples are resistant to apple scab. Nice. So there's a whole bunch of great apples. I have a couple at my house, so Liberty, oh, that's a terrific taste in apple. Mm. Totally immune to apple scab. And there there's go. a Connie, I even like that one better. A Connie? Yeah, first time I ever bit an Akani apple. Mm -hmm. I used to have straight hair. It's been <laughs> curly ever since. That's how good that thing tastes. You know, there's all about fruit shows you can go to, so you can actually taste the apple, see which one you like of the mm -hmm. resistant mm -hmm. I like that. It's really great. Most of the apples that we talked about that resist mm -hmm. apple scab, they also resist powdery mildew, but oh, not wonderful. always. So. Okay. So it's good to check when you're it's buying really a tree. It's really good to check. Yeah, you betcha. You got to be out of your mind to grow a full-size apple tree. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they end up huge. Well, I recommend a dwarf. Okay. Now dwarfs, they're only supposed to get seven or eight feet. But if you don't prune pretty hard, it's going to be 15 feet tall. Even oh, wow. a dwarf. And you do have to remember, you really have to stake the tree probably the first couple of years because dwarf trees have uh, really small root systems. That's why they're dwarfs, you know. They oh, graft okay. them on something that has hardly any roots. But eventually those roots get pretty big and they'll, the tree will try to grow. So okay. keep pruning right from the start. That's the key. All right. So I know at our house we have blueberry bushes and we want to have two of those so there's cross-pollination. Is that something you need for apple trees or do they self-pollinate? Oh yeah, yeah betcha. <laughs> it's absolutely necessary to have two kinds of different apples that bloom at the same time. Oh, okay. And you know, it's really important to either talk to the nursery person or if you buy your apples online, bare root or something, mm -hmm. that you check the chart to make sure they cross-pollinate. Uh -huh. Because apples are not self-fertile, most of them. A few set some fruit, but you'll get way better fruit and a lot more if you have two different kinds. Okay. And you know, for one apple, a bee has to hit a flower of a different kind of apple tree, mm -hmm. then hit this flower on this apple tree 30 times. The next thing to think about is you want a spot with good sunshine. Oh, okay. The books will tell you at least six hours. So your fruit's gonna ripen up earlier and do a lot better if it gets as much sunshine as you can give it. You might get away with six hours, but you could be waiting forever to harvest all those problems. Yeah, especially here, where I mean, we need oh, all yeah. the sunlight Boy, we can get, right? Boy, is that the truth, oh la la. <laughs> okay, the other thing is, you want reasonably well-drained soil. You know, apple trees are pretty tough. They can live in normal, you know, normal, well-drained soil. Okay. But if they're in waterlogged soil, you'll see your fruit tree die in nothing flat. It just uh -huh. will never do well at all. Yeah. When you plant it, you know, you never, what you don't do is dig a big, deep hole. What you want is a really wide hole, no deeper than the roots. Oh. Yeah, because yeah, you're okay. breaking up the soil letting those roots really move out. So I'd say twice as wide as the root ball. The biggest problem is if roots are deeper in the soil, there's not as much oxygen as they need down oh. there and they suffocate. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Yep. So, so don't suffocate your tree. <laughs> no, don't let that happen, whatever you do. Well, gosh, thank you so much, Cisco. I feel really well Orla, equipped no. to go buy my apple tree <laughs> and know how to plant it and hopefully have some delicious fruit in the years to come. Mmm, mmm. Oh, that's delicious. That's tasty.